Thank you, Representative Ella. And I also wanted to say real quickly, thank you to Representative Cheryl Grossman. She's been an outstanding leader when it comes to tourism in the state of Ohio and has done her ample homework and research and has helped us out tremendously in alerting us to how important this is for Ohio as we move forward. So as you are already very aware, Representative DeMille and I are glad to be a part of this progressive change in cleaning up state government and streamlining services. Over the past several months, we have seen the impact of the original Jobs Ohio bill, which my colleague just discussed. The original Jobs Ohio transition drastically reduced the makeup of the Department of Development by about 40%, from 527 employees to the current total of 320 employees. By recognizing that the Department of Development was no longer efficiently serving its purpose, the Department was able to reorganize and refocus its mission under the leadership of Director Christine Schmink and Governor John Kasich. For example, the Department of Development transitioning into the Development Service Agency is now magnifying the impact with current staffing levels and are seeing a one-day return around communication communications letters versus the past return around turnaround of over a week's time. Ohioans are already receiving better service due to these changes. Jobs Ohio and the Developmental Service Agency will be working diligently to create a better economic climate. This will be done through collaboration and a better service structure. De the Development Service Agency will remain focused on long-term programs for economic development, such as the Office of Business Assistance, the Office of Technology Investments, the Office of Strategic Business Investments, the Office of Tourism, the Office of Redevelopment, the Office of Community Assistance, the Office of Community Development, the Office of Energy, and the Governor's Office of Appalachia. And you can see to the side here the charts listing the different structures as we move forward. The Development Services Agency and Jobs Ohio will work together through the Jobs Ohio Regional Network and will also work together in possible outsourcing of loan services to create even higher efficiencies. Contracting for economic development can occur in both Jobs Ohio and DSA. Jobs Ohio will be responsible for business loans, business grants, and close the deal discretionary funds. It is also significant to note that there will be important integration of leadership. The Chief Investment Officer of Jobs Ohio will be added to the Third Frontier Commission and the Tax Credit Authority. This bill also ensures that the ODSA director may execute a contract with Jobs Ohio for any provision of the Ohio Revised Code dealing with economic development. This integrated approach of leadership allows for a quicker process of movement for businesses of both, if both the CIO of Jobs Ohio and the director of DSA recommend to the tax credit authority that the business application be approved. The name change of the Ohio Department of Development to the Development Services Agency, or ODSA, reflects a new mission of the department. ODSA will provide services to Jobs Ohio, for example, they'll administer and oversee loans and tax credits negotiated by Jobs Ohio to support its mission and also continue to provide a range of community services that I mentioned previously. Our bill also works to create efficiencies and set up approvals. House Bill 489 allows a business to move forward on a project before the final approval of the Tax Credit Authority if both the CIO and the Jobs Ohio and the Director of ODSA recommend to the Tax Credit Authority that the business's application be approved. This streamlining of the process allows the business greater efficiency and ability to move forward on a project which could potentially be retaining or creating new jobs for our state. This is also a much more service-oriented approach versus the past expectations that a business should make several trips to Columbus and accommodate the schedule of government. Under the current structure, business expansions have been delayed due to difficulties in scheduling Ohio's tax credit authority meetings. This change also ensures a business is not penalized by these delays. The bill changes the initial date of the income tax revenue period from when the Ohio Tax Credit Authority acts to when ODSA and Jobs Ohio recommend the tax credit to the Ohio Tax Credit Authority. The Ohio Tax Credit Authority will still perform the ultimate approval. House Bill 489 sunsets commissions to provide better service to the customers of the ODSA programs. The two commissions will be sunset that will be sunset are the Development Finance Advisory Council, or better known as DFAC, and the Water and Sewer Commission. The DFAC Council serves as serves currently a redundant role in the recommendation of economic development loans. Currently, before a loan can be finalized, statute requires a loan be reviewed and recommended by DFAC, 
and then reviewed and authorized by the controlling board, and then finally executed by the director of the Ohio Department of Development. Our intent with this movement is by removing DFAC from the process, we anticipate that the loans will close much faster, better serving companies, and allowing development to move at the speed of market. As for the Water and Commission, or the Water and Sewer Commission, the commission appears to be defunct and has not met or taken action since 2007. These services, if necessary, will still be provided through the Ohio Water Development Authority. Lastly, in response to House Bill 153, House Bill 489 makes multiple changes to the Invest Ohio program to clarify the program that was created in the biennial budget process. These changes include updating several definitions and making other language changes to ensure only taxpayers who are in good standing with the state can claim a tax credit. It clarifies that affiliated entities' assets are considered when determining if a business qualifies as a small business. It adds a mechanism to fund the, pro the program through an application fee similar to other tax credit programs administered by ODSA, for example, historic preservation tax credits. And it adds a job creation reporting requirement to the program. Again, as you can see, we have the displays here so you can see the breakdown of the new department as it sits. And I would be more than glad to turn it over to Representative Cheryl Grossman at this time.